CapCut is the best editing program for beginners in 2024, and today we'll be doing the first lesson of my CapCut Masterclass. I'm going to teach CapCut's basic editing skills, and we'll begin with CapCut PC. Get your notes ready, and let's begin. To download CapCut, simply type CapCut in your search engine and press enter. Click on the first link, which is www.capcut.com, or simply click the link I provided in the description. Once you're on the official homepage, you can either click on the big download button. This will automatically detect your device and download the appropriate version. Or alternatively, you can click on products and choose whether you want access to the online version or to download the app. Once you have downloaded the installer, click on it and install it as an administrator. After it's installed, open it. This is the homepage of the application. At the top left, you'll see where you can log in with your email. This will help save your favorite tools, such as effects or transitions. In the bottom left corner, CapCut usually displays important news, such as announcements about new features. In the center, you have your projects. Whenever you're done working on a project, it gets automatically saved in chronological order, and you can open them later. Here, you also have a trash can for all deleted projects, where you can either restore or permanently delete them. There are important things we need to change before editing. Click on the settings button. Down here is where you can update your cap cut and below that is where you can delete an account that you are logged into. Now click on settings, then click on edit. Make sure to turn on a range layer. With this option on, it will allow you to move layers around as you edit. Always have it on. Next, click on performance. The only thing you might wanna change is to turn on proxy. If you have a slow PC, this will help with a smooth workflow. Click on the blue save button and you won't need to open this menu again. To start editing, click on the big button that says create project. This will take you to the main editing interface. At first glance, you'll notice that the interface is divided into four main areas. As we go on with this masterclass, you will master them all. In short, the first tab includes your media pool and other editing tools, such as audio, text, stickers, effects, transitions, captions, filters, and more. Whenever you click on any heading, more subheadings will appear in the left window. In the center, you have the player where you can play back and preview your projects. On the right, you have your project details, but you'll discover more options later. Lastly, we have the timeline. This is where you do most of the work in building your video story to create a final product that you're happy with. Let's start by importing. There are many ways to do this, and I'll show you just three of them. As written, you can import videos, audio, or images. The first way is to click on the import button. You don't need to click directly on the blue plus button. Instead, you can click anywhere around this gray button. A new tab will open, showing your folders on the computer. Just find the folder that has your videos, select the videos you want, and click open. They will be imported into your project. Another way of doing this is by simply using the shortcut on your keyboard, Command or Control plus I. The same tab will appear. The last and my favorite way of importing is by dragging and dropping the folders or files that you've already arranged. Double click on the folder to see the files inside. To go back, click on where it says all. In case you already imported a file and want to put it in a folder, right click and choose new folder. Select the file, then right-click again to delete or rename the folder. Now drag and drop the files inside. Now we have our media pool, and there are a couple of cool things you can do. First, you can quickly preview your video by simply hovering your mouse on top of any video. Or, you can preview the video by selecting it and pressing the space bar on your keyboard. This is only a preview. If you want to add a specific part of the video to the timeline, click on the video once, and use the left and right handles to trim your clip to the exact point you want. To delete a file, simply select it, right click, and then click on delete. To start editing any video, you must first add the video to the timeline. You can either click on the small blue plus button or drag and drop the video onto the timeline. On the timeline, you have the preview axis, which is the yellow line that follows the mouse movement. You can turn it off if you want, but I always prefer it on because it makes editing faster. There's also the playhead. The playhead is used to navigate through the video, 
allowing you to view and edit specific parts at precise times. You can manually move the playhead by clicking on a specific point in the timeline or by dragging it to the desired location. Once the video is on the timeline, the first thing you have to do is play it back. What you see on the screen and whatever changes you make is what will appear in your final export file. However, any video you preview without adding to the timeline will not appear in your exported video. To trim the clip, first select it. Go to the end or beginning of the clip and you'll see a small icon. Hold the left button on your mouse and drag the video backward or forward to trim it. You can also trim from the beginning of the video. Another way to do this is by placing the playhead at the frame where you want to cut. Move the mouse to where it says split and click on it. This will automatically cut the video in half. To delete one of the clips, first select it, then click on the bin icon to delete it, or use the faster method of pressing the delete button on your keyboard. If you delete something by mistake, you can click on the undo button or use the control plus E shortcut. Next to undo is the redo button. The two icons next to trim are for trimming anything on the left side of the playhead and trimming anything on the right side of the playhead. When you click on an empty space on the timeline, you'll only see the details of your project in the right tab. However, as soon as you select any track, the tab will change to show different adjustments you can apply to the selected track. There are a lot of them, but they're all easy to use. Let's go through some important settings you need to know as you continue on your journey to master CapCut. The first small icon above the timeline is for voiceover. When you click on it, you can add a voiceover to your video. You can choose which mic you want to use. There's also a volume slider you can adjust, but the default setting is okay. You can also turn on echo reduction to avoid echoes. To start recording, click on the red button and it will give you a countdown before recording. Once you're done, click on the red button again to end the recording. You will now see that you have an audio track or layer. The second important icon is the track magnet. When it's turned off, your clip can move anywhere. But when it's on, the clip will always fill the nearest gap on the timeline track. For the most part, I always leave it on to prevent exporting a final video that has an unwanted black screen. The third icon is auto snapping. When it's off, it's very difficult to get the exact point of the cut you made. But when I turn it on, my job becomes much easier as the video snaps in at the exact point where my playhead is allowing me to place the video precisely. It shows a blue line to indicate the exact point of the cut. Lastly, you can play around with the minus and plus sliders to zoom in or out on the timeline. If you're zoomed in, click on this small icon to zoom and fit the timeline so you can see everything you're working on. However, the faster way to zoom is by using shortcut keys. The first method is by holding control or command and using the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out. You can also hold control or command and use the minus or plus buttons on the keyboard. Now, let's focus on the player tab. The first icon is for zooming in and out. Next to it is a very important setting. This is where you can adjust the ratio of your project. If you're creating short form content, then choose 916 and fit your video by stretching it on the side and adjusting the position to what looks best. The next icon allows you to enter full screen mode, which is ideal when you want to spot mistakes in your edit. Press the space bar to play or pause the video or use the player button. To exit full screen mode, click on the two arrows or press the escape key on your keyboard. Moving on, click on the three lines. The first option is the color scope, which is essential for color grading. However, you don't need to worry about it right now. Just turn it off. The second option is preview. Normally, I recommend leaving the default settings, but if your computer is slow, make sure to switch to best performance. The final video will not be affected. Lastly, we have export still frame. This is important if you want to export a specific frame as a picture to use in the thumbnail. Move the playhead to the frame you want, click on the three lines and choose export still frame. Choose the folder where you want to save the picture. I always keep the resolution at 1080p since that's the size of my project. For format, choose either PNG or JPEG. You can turn on this button if you want the picture to be automatically imported into your current project. Click on export and the picture will be part of the media pool. To export your video, click on the blue export button, choose your settings and save. 
but that's a topic for another day. This was the basic editing lesson to give anyone who has never opened CapCut the required skills to start editing in CapCut. See you in the next lesson.